Hey guys, Braden from Adrenaline Rush Sports Australia. Today I just want to talk a little bit about trimming the kite and uh, how you can trim it to make your kite fly the best you can in certain conditions, okay? So understanding um, basically what I'm talking about is pulling your trim strap that's on all bars now. Also understanding what your knots do on your wingtip knots and if you're riding certain, certain type of kites like uh, sea kites and stuff like that that have knots on the, the front three lines, understanding what they do as well and, and how that everything affects the kite. So I'll just draw a little bit of a diagram of the kite and, and all the positions that you can probably adjust. So let's just say that we've got, this is our kite here, it's going to be really basic kite. Okay, now what I'll do is draw, we've got a wingtip lines. Now on your wingtip lines, generally you're going to have maybe a couple of different knots depending on the type of the kite you have. So you'll, let's just say we've got three here. So we're going to be running a four line kite initially. So let's just say we've got a bridle that comes down here, something like that, probably a little bit far. And on your four line kite, sometimes you'll only have one attachment point on the front, or you might even have a loop instead of a knot there. So it's kook proof, which is they call it nowadays. So we'll just start with this system here. Now I'll run a different color. So we've got our line. So you get a wingtip, oh, hang on, we'll bring that in a little bit more. So we've got our wingtip lines going to our bar. Now we'd imagine that we have red and blue or different colors, but let's just, Keep it pretty simple. And we've got our front lines going to our bar here, okay? So on our, on our center lines, we have this trim strap, and we have our bar here, and then we've got our chicken loop here. So on most kites, you will, you will have wingtip uh, knots. You'll have a trim strap, and sometimes uh, in, certain, in certain brands, you'll have, uh, instead of having the knots up here, you might have them down here. Or you might have both. You might have a rear line adjuster, they call it. So, first things first, we'll just go over the trim strap. So what this trim strap does is, some people call it like a preset. What this does is effectively shorten your, your front lines, or shorten and lengthens your front lines. So you imagine if we have our trim strap all the way out, if you pull it in a little bit, what you're actually doing, instead of having, imagine all these lines under tension, you're creating a little bit of uh, sag in your rear lines, your rear steering lines. So that's why you have all the slackness that when you pull your bar in, when it's depowered, it's really delayed because you've got to turn that bar a lot further for you to be able to uh, move that kite or alter the shape of the kite to, uh, to turn it. So lengthening and shorting your front lines or uh, trimming your, your power depower strap will basically uh, change that length there. Now also, take into consideration that some people use it as a preset. So let's just say that it was really light wind and you went out and you, you had your, your, your outside line set on your light wind settings on light wind knots, but you find that the kite's still backstalling quite a bit. You pull that bar in, it just wants to backstall all the time. Um, so a backstall, if you're, if you're sort of still new to the sport, is imagine we're flying the kite directly above our head. If we pull our bar in or maybe turn it a little bit, it's going to sort of drift straight backwards down into the power zone or, or even on the edges when you're trying to get the kite off the ground. Now what's actually happening there is if you pull your bar in too much, you put too much tension on these rear lines and you pitch the kite back too far. So you imagine if we uh, pull our, I'll do a little bit of a diagram on the side. So in, in the, an analogy that I like to use, if you put your hand outside of a car window, you, you turn your hand up, uh, hand, uh, hand comes up, turn your hand down, hand comes down. Same principle, it's just like a wing in, on an aeroplane as well. So if we pull our bar in, so let's just say that we sort of got this wing shape here, it'll make it a little bit more aerodynamic for us. What we're doing is we pull our bar in, so we're pulling these back lines down. What we're doing is pitching the kite back, okay? So we're pulling our hand up on the outside of the window. Now if we let our bar out, so the bar comes out, what's actually going to happen here is now the the wing or the kite or, or whatever we're talking about is going to come back up to neutral. So when we pull our bar in, captures more wind, creates more uh, lift in the kite. When we let our bar out, we have more wind goes through the canopy, okay? Now, going back to riding in light winds, if you find that your kite's depower, I mean, backstalling all the time, maybe that you need to 
trim your kite instead of depowering it to let more wind go through the canopy to thus keep the kite moving nice and freely without it backstalling. Now when you're riding light winds it's a lot different to riding in the stronger winds. You need to keep the kite moving all the time to build up that apparent speed. So I mean perfect example again, yeah, it's not a knot outside, it's zero knots, it's glassed out and everyone's gone fishing. You're driving down the street in your car, put your head out the window, it feels really windy, the car stops, there's no wind. That's what apparent speed is. So it's the the, um, the, the speed of the wind going past your hand or past the car or, or past the, the kite in this example. So what I'll do, understanding the, the pitching um, up and down of the, the kite, that's what these, these, or that's what the trim strap does. Um, changes length of front lines, means the ability to pitch the kite back further or uh, less is um, resulted. Now understanding what these end, end knots do on your wingtip lines, Basically, that just um, short, gives you the ability to pitch the kite back further, okay? So instead of going on your first knot, you're going on your second knot, theoretically, you're shortening your front, uh, your rear lines, so then you have a greater leverage. So let's just say that on this first knot, you can pitch your kite back 30 degrees, on the second knot, you can pitch it back 35, and on the top knot, you can pitch it back, pitch it back 40 degrees. Um, that basically means you give the ability to the kite to come back further into the wind window, or pitch the kite back. Um, so generally, I mean, for what I do, and, and what I recommend is find something that, that suits you 99% of the time, and, and in your um, home spot location. Um, but just understand if you want to go up at night, that's going to affect the, how far you can pitch the kite back. Some kites generally have like the middle setting might be their everyday knot, and then going down is light wind, and going up is strong winds. Now let's uh, just skip that section for a second so we can understand that what the trim strap does and what the wingtip knots do. Now we're talking about the uh, the rear line adjusters down on the bar, same principle as the wingtip knots, uh, it just shortens your rear lines to give yourself more tension in the lines to pitch your kite back further. Okay, I hope we understand that and I hope you're keeping up with me. Okay, now we're going to talk about five-line kites for a second and especially the, the five-line C kites like GPs and, and other kites out there that have knots on their front lines, okay? So we'll draw another, another kite, wingtip lines, we've got our fifth line here, then we've also got, uh, let's call them our front lines, our main lines, and they're all coming back to a point here, I'll get rid of these. Okay, we're following, so this is I mean, roughly, very, very roughly what a five-line kite does. Now, uh, how it looks like. Now, you can adjust, um, sometimes they have knots on your front three lines. So you might have two knots here on your front line here, and two knots here, and two knots here. Now, let's take in consideration that now we're talking about our front lines. If we go up a knot in our front lines, what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to lengthen or shorten our front lines? So I learned this from experience. I just trial and error and just sort of figured out, which is a great way to do it as well. Um, but basically, if we go up a knot in our front lines, we're going to depower the kite because we're making our front lines shorter. Now, you imagine that you've gone up a knot, you've got two, three inches of line that's just dangling there where you could have been on your end knot. So what this is doing, if we go back to a side view, so we've got our, uh, let's just say we've got a wing here again. We'll keep it nice and simple. We're on our end knots here, and this is our wingtip line here. If we go on this, on our front knot, on our bottom knots and our front lines, our, our ability to pitch the kite back and forth is, uh, is this, like, as standard as, as, as it comes out of the box. But let's just say we've, we're going up a knot on our front three lines. So you have to, if you do one, you gotta do them all. Go up a knot in your front three lines. Now basically what this is, is you've, you've shortened your front lines, so now your ability to pitch the kite back is a lot less. So now you've pulled your bar in, you've got less, it's the same as trimming, you're pulling your trim strap, you have less ability to pitch the kite back down, okay? So, um, that's just the one thing that I found. If you're going to adjust your knots on your front three lines on a sea kite, make sure that you do them all the same because if you're going sort of up a knot on your front lines and leaving your fifth line the same, it doesn't really achieve anything. 
Um, that's basically trimming on the knots and your trim strap. That's pretty much about it. Um, I guess the one last thing that you want to take in consideration, actually probably an important one that I didn't cover, is positions of the like let's just imagine this is like the last sort of foot of a wingtip, or even if we've got like a really swept one like that, you've got usually attachment points here for your wingtip lines. So you might have, most brands come out with a middle, in the middle setting here. So you have your wingtip bridle here, or your line. What this does is changes the ability for you to put leverage into your kite. So um, setting in the middle, that's factory standard. If you go out towards the end, so you go onto your, your outer settings, you're going to uh, create the ability to turn the kite a lot quicker. It's going to have a less bar pressure and it's going to be a lot, uh, lot nicer in the air to fly. If you really like a nice, fast, aggressive kite, then something that you're after. If you go forward in the, uh, on the three settings, it's going to uh, put a lot more bar, pre more bar pressure into the kite. The kite's going to turn a lot more progressively, so it's going to be really big swooping turns. Um, and every kite handles differently, of course, but taking into consideration, if you go forward, it's going to um, be a lot more progressive and a lot more powerful in the bar pressure. Same for a swept, uh, swept, um, uh, swept wingtip as well. One last thing before I bombard you with any too, too much information. You do have uh, settings on the front bridles as well sometimes, especially on sea kites. You might have a freestyle and a wake style setting. What this does is controls the whereabouts the kite flies in the window. So I used to play around with this and I did um, quite a bit of testing on my GPs that I had in Brazil in the summer of 2014 or you know, our summer, I guess in Australia, spring, summer. Um, I really, I really dialed my kites in, so I found that on 9 meter kites I really like the freestyle setting because I just wasn't, my timing wasn't good enough to uh, meet, the, meet the kite, so basically if you load and pop the kite comes forward into the window. Um, my 11 and 13 I could ride wake style settings and get away with it, so um, that just affects whereabouts in the, in the window it flies, but just test it out and see how you go. There's a lot of information to take in. Um, if you lost any, if you if you lost it about that at all, please uh, don't, don't hesitate to contact me. You can email me at info at adrenalinrush.net.au. Just leave a comment below. Um, if you got any questions? Just send them my way. I'm happy to try and uh, answer as much as I can. Okay, Braden from Adrenaline Rush. I hope you learned something today. Go and rewatch this video. If I went too quick, um, there's a lot of information there. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out adrenalinrush.net.au for all the links.